How's it going, Airplane Collectors? Welcome back to, to another video. It's your host, Ray. Today's video is a model review on a model that's been highly anticipated by us collectors here in the United States. This is the Panda model 1 to 400 scale of JetBlue Airways Airbus A321 new engine options long range variant. This model was just shipped out to retailers on May 12th, and I just got mine yesterday, so in two days from Waffle Collectibles. Shout out to them. And we've waited for this model for quite a while now, so I'm glad that we're finally getting it. This review will consist of a short discussion of the box and then a discussion and analysis of the model's features. And at the end of the video, I'm going to give you guys my opinion on the model and whether or not I recommend it to other collectors, as well as a comparison to what other competitors have to offer. So this is going to be pretty interesting. Also, apologies in advance if my voice sounds weird. I've been feeling a bit under the weather recently. I got sick over the past week and I'm still feeling some of the effects from it. So please don't mind. Now sit back, relax, and enjoy. Alright, so let's start this off with the box. The box is moderately sized at 14 centimeters long, 14 centimeters tall, and 4 centimeters wide. I'll show you guys around the box now, so obviously here's the front. Here's the bottom. Right side. Top. Left side. Here's the back side. Here's the model itself. The model is 11.4 centimeters long. The wingspan is 8.6 centimeters and it's three centimeters tall. So it's small and it's accurate to one to 400 scale. I'll give you guys a quick 360 of the model, assuming that I didn't zoom in too far. So sit, so just take a moment to observe some of the features on this model and apologies if I zoomed in too far and if my fingers get in the way of anything. We'll start the review at the front of the aircraft. Here you can see the nose and a lot of the printed detail up front. Very highly detailed up here. The nose shape is really nicely done. No complaints. You can even see the uh, flying Wi-Fi logo here as well as a few other things. Very nicely done on Panda's part. We, as we move down the fuselage, you can see more features including the overwing exits which look really cool with the red logos. The one And the two rear exits back here also look nice. There's the Airbus A321 Neo logo and the registration. We've reached the vertical stabilizer featuring the streamer's tail, the newest tail from JetBlue. It looks really good, no complaints, lots of molded detail in the, in the tail as well. The same can be said about the right side of the aircraft. Lots of detail and no complaints, no printing issues so far, and definitely no shape issues. Moving on to the wings, the wings look really nice. A decent amount of printed detail is on this as well as... A little bit of a dark gray color instead of just the uniform gray that I usually see. Looks really nice. I'm not sure how accurate the wing color is. It's a, it's pretty, it's a little bluer than it should be in my opinion. Please note that the camera does not represent the actual color. My camera is terrible at picking up colors. But aside from that, lots of molded detail, lots of printed detail, very nicely done. The undersides only feature molded detail and they still look good down here too. Moving on to the winglets, the winglets have been, or the sharklets have been in an area of a lot of discussion recently. The outside of the shark, well, both the outside and the inside of the shark, sharklets look really nice. Here you can see the inside paint uh, with the streamers on the inside of the sharklets. The shapes also look really good on the sharklets, so I have no complaints overall. We'll move to the rear of the aircraft again. Here you can see the APU and the horizontal stabilizers. Very nicely done back here. The horizontal stabilizers have an impressive amount of detail. I did not expect to see the molded details on those. Very impressive compared to what other competitors have to offer. So very nicely done on the horizontal stabilizers. The APU looks nice with a little hole back there too. The engines on this model have also been a major selling point for a lot of collectors. The engines on this model are properly sized. If anything, they're they might be a little bit tiny, however, I'm not entirely sure if they're too small or not. But they are definitely properly sized compared to what else the competition has to offer. So, very nicely done on Panda's part. The exhaust nozzles look fantastic, nice and detailed, sharp. And there's also a lot of printed detail on the undersides of the engines, if my camera would focus and show that to you guys. Here's a better shot of what I was trying to show you guys. Looks really good down here overall. Something I'd like to point out with the engines is that sometimes 
actually on this model too you can kind of see it the engines will be bent in weird ways like this one had it bent downwards and outwards facing away to the fuselage i had to kind of bend the engine back to the normal position and even then it was really stubborn because this pylon part is made out of plastic so just keep in mind the engines might arrive in a weird orientation if you decide to buy this model Moving on to external features, this model has antennas and Wi-Fi domes. There are four antennas on this model. There's the one in the front of the aircraft right here. Looks good, no alignment problems. And we'll move down to the, to the rear of the aircraft where you can see the next two antennas. And you can actually see the antenna on the bottom, but I'll show you guys better in a second. Here you can see the Wi-Fi dome, which is actually made really well and it attaches to the, attaches to the aircraft nicely. There is this large antenna here, which isn't fit the best. It's kind of twisted and mounted incorrectly. And then this small antenna here. The antennas are really small and they're actually, I think, a little smaller than they're supposed to be. So I won't complain too much. On the bottom of the aircraft, there's only one singular antenna and it's right here. Nicely done, no complaints. It's very easy to poke yourself, but it's also kind of hard to break if it isn't already broken. So just be careful when handling the model. Here's the bottom of the aircraft. The bottom of the aircraft is not very nicely detailed with a lot of printed detail, at least on the fuselage. So kudos to Panda on that. However, we'll discuss the main part of the bottom of the aircraft, the landing gear. The landing gear aren't the best on this model in terms of, I guess, quality control, because something that Panda model A320 family landing gear have is that usually they're really stiff or they don't move. And this model is certainly no exception. The Right main landing gear is stiff and it won't move. The nose wheel is obviously stiff, but albeit it's very nicely detailed. And uh, ironically, the left side main landing gear, oh my god, my voice sounded terrible on that one. Um, the wheel does actually roll, so th at least there's that. it has that going for it. Here's a f the front of the aircraft. Here we can see the wing flex is really nice. The angle at which the sharklets are is also almost perfect. However, this model is with, uh, not without faults. You can see the gear balance is a little off. The cockpit window tilting is tilted towards the right side of your screen or the left side of your of the aircraft. So that's also a problem. And that concludes the review in record time for some reason. Now for my personal opinion, this model is pretty great. Overall, uh, Panda Models Airbus A320 family mold is fantastic compared to most of what else the other co uh, competitors have to offer. And honestly, I recommend this model, but proceed with caution because I've seen in chat groups online that other collectors have received their models with various defects. For example, unfortunately, a collector received their model completely broken Almost the whole thing was broken and horribly messed up, and that was really unfortunate to see. As well as the defects that I mentioned earlier, they could be to a lesser or worse degree. I've experienced wheels being broken, but that's different. That's on different Panda models. So, quality control is usually decent with these models, but be careful because sometimes you might get a bad egg. So... I recommend it, just be careful, and just know that you're taking a risk when you buy one. Now you may also be asking, since I mentioned it earlier in the video, what does the competition have to offer? Well, the only other model manufacturer that's re that's released this model is Gemini Jets. And for those of you who have watched my channel or collect Gemini Jets and have collected them for a long enough time, you guys know that Gemini Jets at this point, it's just... Russian roulette with defects and their JetBlue A321 new engine options long range or yeah just basically this model that was no exception to it and it has it's received so many instances of quality control issues bent cockpit window printing horrible nose shapes and even the box in, on the Gemini Jets model says that it's an Avianca or Avianza I'm not sure how you say that airline it doesn't even say that it's a JetBlue A321, so if you want to get that one, go for it. You're probably at a higher risk of issues, but if you're considering getting one, get the Panda one. That's all I can say. But that concludes the video. Thanks so much for watching, and thank you for putting up with my sick voice. I promise it will be back to normal in a few days. 
And that that's the video. Thank you so much for watching. Like, comment, and subscribe. Stay tuned for more airplane and siren content. And I'll see you guys later.